feel like they're bullying me. They want to bully me, and they feel like they found a little crackle or crease in my armor, and they want to use that against me somehow, so they continue to just regurgitate the same old stories, the same old storyline, and, you know, recreate beefs with players and former teammates. <clears throat> Nick, Kevin Durant feels like he's getting bullied. What do you think? Katie, man. Hey, listen, I, I'm technically a millennial. I'm on the older, the, the upper bound of millennials. We both are. And, <laughs> uh, and I, sometimes millennials get a bad rap, and I try to defend them to my older friends like Jenna. Hey. And I, But now you've got a NBA superstar saying that Bill Plaschke's bullying him. Come on, man. And the, the media blaming here, here's the other hard truth for Kevin. Everything we said was correct. Every step of the way, the stuff that KD got the angriest about, we now know, thanks to his own words, are exactly how it went down. That he was checked out on OKC during his final year there, already thinking about his next move, up to and including during the 3-1 deficit. A few months ago, he went on Hot 97, said blowing that 3-1 lead was not even one of the five biggest losses of his career because he didn't think they were really a true championship contender. What? You're up 3-1 on 73-win team. That's Kevin's words. It's not me bullying to bring up your words. And then in this interview, when it came to OKC, he talked about how he looked at the Warriors that year as a new, fresh team on the rise. Well, yeah, I mean, I suppose they had just won the championship, and he was excited about living in the Bay. And then also on this podcast, he talked about how he knew about midway through the year that he was moving on from Golden State. That's all we were saying. That it is The fact that it was accurately reported is not bullying. The fact that everything that the media has, I shouldn't say everything, the vast majority of things the media has said is going on with Kevin Durant has proven out to be accurate is not bullying. It's accurate reporting. And the... The victim complex of, oh, woe is me, him also saying in this podcast, Mannix, this, you guys didn't try to do this to LeBron, Wade, and Bosch. First of all, LeBron, Wade, and Bosch had it worse than any team ever initially. But the reason they weren't trying to tear him apart was because there wasn't someone plotting an exit. Because they didn't handle it the way KD handled it. And so Steve Kerr has said he knew Kevin was floating away midway through the year. So I just... I don't understand the woe is me, everyone's against me, as opposed to just, man, I've made decisions, I'm accountable for those decisions, and I wanna, for some reason, keep talking about those decisions like I'm the victim here. Yeah, I think it's revisionist history to say that LeBron, Wade, and Bosch were not treated this way since they were crucified the first couple of years down there for putting that team together and being non-competitive, all the things that Kevin Durant was criticized for. I'm one of the media members that have covered Kevin virtually every step of the way in his career. I've never bullied him. I don't know too many people. I mean, maybe there's one or two people out there from the Oklahoma area that just don't like him because he left, but I don't think they've ever bullied him. He just never made the transition from what he was in Oklahoma City, this kind of revered figure that began in Seattle, stuck with his team all the way throughout into just the mercenary for hire that he became in Golden State. He never understood why the criticism and why the villainy was so strong. The other thing he never, I think what a lot of this comes down to, and he's somewhat right about this, I don't think he gets the respect he deserves for the two championships they won in Golden State. I think, Nick, there are still people out there that would say, well, Golden State would have won without him. That is categorically untrue. The Golden State Warriors do not have those two championships without Kevin Durant. How he played in those finals was incredible. So th if that's what he's fixated on, I get it. But everything else is just... As you said, accurately reporting every step of the way. Yeah, and when there's an element of truth with something that's being said about you, that gets under your skin a little more than when it's something salacious that everybody knows that it's not you. But with Kevin Durant, this is just what comes along with being in the conversation as one of the best players in the world. I mean, you're focused on developing your brand. That's a big part of why you came to New York in free agency this past summer. I mean, if you want to have the show, the boardroom, and do all the other things off the court, if you want to make 30 to $40 million a year with your basketball salary, people are going to have questions about why you make certain decisions. And when you have the reporters accurately talking about 
what you're doing, your move that you plotted when you were at OKC to go to Golden State, and then your move to the East Coast this past summer, I don't understand why you're getting upset about it. People will want to talk about it because you are one of the best players in the world. So this is just par for the course. And when you're going back and forth with the media or with people on social media, you have to be willing to take it just like you're willing to dish it. And I just feel but like he wasn't just willing to dish it from his own account. Didn't he come up with phantom accounts so he could dish it? That is worthy of bringing up Listen, and talking that's about it. You don't, that's not bullying. Well, I get, and that's the thing that bothers me with Kevin Durant. And I mean, listen, this is what it is. If you want to be on social media and you want to go take shots at people, people are going to take shots at you. But I don't think it's anybody trying to bully you. This is just what happens around sports because it's such a huge platform. Platform in our culture. So I just, for Kevin Durant, this I is just embarrassing. Think this, this is not something that you should be fixated this on. This is embarrassing, is what it is. Listen, I, it, the, the, there is like an old school mentality of, oh, listen, being bullied is part of growing up. It makes you tougher. No, no, miss me with that. There, the, we do have a bullying problem, right? It, and by the way, adults can bully other adults. It's a real thing. And I'm glad we're getting to a place where we are recognizing that and trying to do better, especially for young people. I, I mean that sincerely. But occasionally, my six-year-old comes home from school and says, I got bullied today. I say, what happened? And what she means is someone was a little mean to her. That's not bullying you. We know what bullying is. Kevin, what Kevin Durant clear, seems to not understand that every other mainstream pro athlete, big time pro athlete understands is, hey man, with the money and the fame and, the, and all of it, comes some nonsense that you don't like. Yes, you are going to be talked about. Yes, you are going to be picked at. Yes, you are going to be inspected in a way that you wouldn't if you worked at Home Depot. And But you know what? There are a lot of good positives that go along with it. Everyone agrees with that. Everyone, whether it should be or shouldn't be, a huge part of the NBA's popularity are these are talking about these guys sometimes as three-dimensional figures, sometimes as two-dimensional figures. And calling that bullying is embarrassing. It is, it, it, and I don't want to sound like like a, a caveman, but it, it, as a grown man, what are you talking about? Like you're, you are super rich, super powerful, super successful, and the the beat writer from the Oklahoman is bullying you. Get out of here! Like I and I and, and uh, I know Matt a little bit. I know Stephen Jackson a lot. I would have loved to know what what Action Jack is thinking. While KD's sitting there saying, I'm being bullied by a guy who makes 42 grand a year writing game stories. Yeah. Give me a break. Well, I mean, look, and bullying is not 280 character critiques on Twitter, especially when you can walk away from that. You don't have to log on. You don't have to put your mentions on. There are a whole bunch of things you can do. I think, again, it comes back to the, the turn he made from hero to villain was so fast and so bad at that time because he went from you know, an Oklahoma City team where he was revered to the worst possible situation you can go to if you still want to be beloved. A 73, 73 win Oklahoma, or Golden State Warrior team. You can't, you can't make a turn like that as, as bad as it could be. I'm right there with you. And the one thing I look at with this situation, the decision that he made this summer, it wasn't what was in his basketball best interest. You can't say he was putting himself in a better situation going from Golden State where they're moving to a new arena when you have Clay and Steph Curry to the Brooklyn Nets even though you have Kyrie coming with you. This was about things that were off the court, another agenda that he had, and a part of the media coverage for the NBA enables him to be able to do all of those things. So you can't have it both ways, And in I don't my even opinion. care about guys like, you know, LeBron going where he went, Kevin Durant, they're free to go where they want to go, but they, this comes with it. Like, that, this that's comes the with point. The that's the point. Let's stop talking about it. How about stop talking about it, Kevin Durant? It's the a, more you uh, talk about it, the more it's brought up, then the more you insane, complain dude. about being... I have more to say, but I'm being bullied that we have to go to... Comment